everyone. We hope you're enjoying the nice hot summer days wherever you are. And uh, on this video, we're actually going to show you our trip to the Kettle River Provincial Park, which is in the Boundary Kootenai region. We had a great time there, spent a couple of nights, and Gordon did some adventuring, which you will see. So we hope you enjoy this video. Provincial Park is probably about six hour drive. Yeah, I think maybe yeah, maybe from, around six hours from, if we're going slowly. Yeah, from the Vancouver area. It's a little bit of a long drive for us to do in one day, but we decided to go on this trip maybe a few Last days minute. before, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> no long-term planning. That's somewhere, it's in our guidebook in our road trip. Yes. Think. <laughs> and what we did was we actually searched all the parks to see what was available. There wasn't a lot for those days. And we ended up, I think we found a last-minute site. Because it was a really nice site, site number 70. And I think somebody must have canceled Yeah, probably a last-minute cancellation, so it showed up. Yeah, so we ended up having a pretty nice site, which we we were very happy about. The campsite overall, though, is kind of busy for us. The sites that you're able to book a reservation for, not all of them, but the main part is they're relatively close together, and it's in part because it's a very dry, arid area, so there's not a lot of you know foliage between the sites as well, so not as much privacy. It seems to be a real group-oriented place, like lots of people there camping with other people, either in their campsite or in neighboring campsites. If you wanted a little bit more privacy, okay. which we typically do, there are some sites along the river that are reservation, and then the, the other sites that are better suited for that are actually, I think, the first-come, first-serve sites. There's actually a lot more space in the first-come, first-serve than there is between the sites that you have reservations for, though we ended up with a Pretty decent site overall. Backs right on to the Kitta Valley Rail Trail. And it was a good spot. We liked yeah. it, but it was a little, I think it was a little loud for us. Um, you know, well, we did have a party of young people right next to us, so they were... Yeah, so that was a bit uh, louder. Yeah, they were up late, and they're talking, and you know, late, music. You know, not in bed by 8.30. <laughs> and, um, and they were coming and going. Yeah, they were visiting other campsites, <laughs> so it was, just, it was just busy. It got really hot, uh, during the day are really hot for us, uh, mid-30s, and we actually did run the air conditioner for about an hour just to cool the van down on the first day for Finch. We were fortunate with our battery system. I mean, we ran for an hour, and I think we were probably, we were down to maybe half our battery capacity, so that left us lots until, you know, we were going to be driving and charging the next day. We had tons of power. The uh, solar there was uh, also very good, so that worked out well. And then um, you'll see in the video, I did a bit of a paddle and uh, a hike, and that was kind of fun. I can go a little higher. Only has to be an inch or two lower than the other one. All right, we're trying something a little different today. It's a dry cider called Salt Spring Wild. We've had their, uh, I guess it was semi-dry before, or and it was really tasty, so now we'll try the, the dry side. Mm -hmm. It's hot out, by the way. It's uh, like 33 or 30. Hot. <laughs> it's stinking hot. 33, 34, I'm definitely melting. We actually have a, quite a hodgepodge meal because we don't really want to cook, and we have a, bu a bunch of leftovers uh, from our uh, journey here. Yeah. And, and some things we picked up. Yeah. So we've got veggies and hummus, vegan sausage roll. This is our little protein plate. And then we've got some blood bread pizzas from Cobb's Bread. So yeah, I think this is gonna make a pretty filling meal and we don't have to cook.
Morning, guys. Oh, you're pretty looking cows. Yeah. Thank you three too. Hello. Yeah, I'd say you're wagging your tail because you're friendly, but I suspect it's to get rid of bugs. Looks like some rain clouds over there. We have a 30% chance of, I think, rain and possibly some thunder this morning. Hopefully after I'm done my paddle. River's very calm but moves very quickly. It's not like paddling down the Yukon River, like my friends Michael and Jane have done. But it's a pleasant little paddle. As you see kids in those little sort of inner tube boats coming down here, it's a pretty simple paddle, at least when the water's down at a reasonable level like it is now. Still higher than normal, I think. So beautiful. The birds are wonderful. Where all the forest had been burned and is regrowing, there's just an abundance of them. There's the bridge. And that's where I'm going to exit, just on the other side. We were there last night. Same eagle that was maybe even the same tree when I went for a paddle this morning, I think. I recognized him because I could hear him yelling at me. We also did a drive to some of the neighboring areas one day. and. Uh, yeah, and Gordon stopped for ice cream at a place yes. called Beaverdale. <laughs> yes, it was really good. It was interesting for us too, was the the second day the weather changed sort of midday, mm -hmm. some dark yeah. clouds. I thought it was going to be a lot of thunder and lightning, and there was some. But the temperature went from 33 or 34 degrees down to 19 in probably an hour, and then we had some rain, which actually made it really refreshing. By the time we got back to our campsite, our mat, um, had blown away almost, almost. <laughs> yeah. and we were told by uh, our neighbors that were camping that uh, a tree fell down as well so uh, it was quite the storm I guess uh, but we missed it because we were on the road we we got some rain but that was okay for dinner tonight beyond meat sausages smashed potatoes and some broccoli. steamed broccoli. Oh, and a few carrots. Carrots. <laughs> and I am having Poplar Grove Pinot Gris. It's um, Okanagan wine from BC. And Gordon is having the cider again. Salt bring wild. <laughs> bon appetit. So Mickey knows I'm often not comfortable to sort of sitting around the campsite, so she sent me off to get up on the ridge behind me. There's a, a trail that goes up there. It's not marked on any maps, but I could probably find it again. 
Got about an hour up, an hour down, and that should get me back before dark, or around dark. So that's the ridge. Should be able to make it. Kind of up on the ridge, but I'm stuck, because it looks like this is private land. They've got it fenced off. No signs, but I think they're trying to keep cattle and people off. So maybe there's another trail farther over there. I don't know. But steep coming up the way I did. I didn't bother filming because I wanted to make time. I could probably scoot right up over there. But I think I'm I think it'd be inappropriate to cross over into this land. Anyway, maybe tomorrow I might try from farther down. We'll see. Try a little bit more up here, but I think I'll end up turning around. It's about 35 minutes, so not that long to get here. Steep though. No trail through most of it. Just had to make my way through. What look like animal trails in the grass. Try a little farther up here. No luck. I'll turn back. I don't see anything. Other than what looks like it'll be a beautiful sunset. That would look a lot nicer up on those rocky peaks. Anyway, I'm going to head down. If I have a little bit of time, I'm going to explore farther along the river and see if there's potentially another route up here. We came up here once before, but we went in the other direction to a small peak there, and in doing so, didn't cross any fenced off land. I just love grassland areas. Both Mickey and I really enjoy visiting areas like that. Nice view of the valley. And the wildflowers. It looks like an old road maybe through here. Gets me to where I need to go. I just need to go down over here. Oh. So it took me a little longer than I expected. I've got three minutes for turnaround and I'm gonna have to rush. There's the river I paddled down. Campground's down there. You can see the bridge over there. I kind of took a direct route, which was a mistake. Ended up getting cut off by cattle fences. So I took a less direct route out and found what looked like a hiking trail. Probably can't see it, but there's a little flag there. I am so tempted. This looks like an old mining shaft. I wouldn't want to... I wouldn't want to fall into that. It's not marked off. So I'm not quite at the top. I'm literally less than five minutes, probably three minutes away, but I'm right at my turnaround time and it's going to get dark. So my choices are either come back another time or come up tomorrow morning. Just beautiful. Time to turn around. I'm going to have to run part of it and cut around there, get onto the hiking trail, which leads through the forest. some fog in the forest but not much. Trail marker. Intersection here. So that's as best as you get to know to turn in this direction. Of course I figured that all out last night. The second gate, I just came through and locked it again. The road last night, I was over to the left and eventually got cut off by the fence. And so I ended up turning around and heading down. And then part way down, I spotted this trail, got onto it, and then realized I could come back up it, which is what I did when I was running short of time. Some trail tape, helping you choose the right direction. Not particularly good trail tape, but it works. I 
This is a much, much easier route than my more direct route. Not just because I got cut off when I took it, but because it's road grade. It's not nearly as steep. Steep enough in some places. Beautiful trail. I think it's the kind of trail Mickey would like. to get here. It's about three kilometers. Fog in the valley, of course, but got to see what it looked like with the river last night. And it's just beautiful. There's some nice flowers up here. Uh, there's either, I'm not sure whether they're quail or uh, grouse that are just down below me. Really a nice little hike, actually. And, you know, the way I, yesterday, what happened for me is I guess I zigged where I should have zagged. I got up to a uh, section on the road. The more direct route would be to go left. And in fact, what I needed to do was double back to the right for maybe you know, 200 yards or something along that line. And then there was another road that was the one that came up here. So the trail wasn't as obvious as I thought, but once I figured it out, pretty straightforward. We're going to head out. We don't actually have a firm destination, but because this week is going to be so hot, we decided we wanted to get somewhere with a little bit of elevation. So we're going to probably go back to Manning Park because the temperature there is probably five degrees cooler than most of the other areas around here and a little bit more bearable for us and for Finch. Nice campground. I think it tends to be a bit busier in terms of just people. So I think if we had recommendations would be, you know, look for the sites that look like they might be a bit more remote or consider a first come first serve site. And But if you really love to floaty down a river, then that's a great yeah. place to do it. There was a ton of people doing that. and Or ride your bike on the Kettle Valley Trail, yeah. which goes an incredible distance if you're into cycling. And then there's actually a, a you know, pretty reasonable hike up to a local ridge. Very short hike, but nice. But once you're up on that ridge, if you wanted to explore some of the other mountains, you could do so. Yeah, the services are great. Uh, they have a nice shower and washroom building. The showers are nice and hot. <laughs> we noticed yeah, we tried clean. that. Yeah, And they also have um, sort of outhouse buildings uh, interspersed in the campground, and they're all flush toilets. We almost felt like it was luxurious <laughs> by our if, standards. If I was going to complain, it would be that the toilet that looks like it's a pit toilet, but when you open it, there's a flush toilet, and there's a sink and a mirror. But you know, when you go to wash your hands, it only has cold water. <laughs> Uh, two other things we thought we'd mention too if you do go there and, and you're not able to get a reservation and you need to try and it's full. There are two campsites uh, reasonably close that are good um, alternatives just for a night or two. One that's quite close and it's probably about a 10 to 15 minute drive away up the hill is Johnson Creek and Johnston? Johnston Creek. Yeah, Johnston. And actually we did stay there before so we'll yeah. link a video here on that trip. Yeah, we've stayed there, and it's it's a it's a beautiful little campsite. Not a lot to do there, but it's it's a really nice place to just spend a night. And it's rarely ever busy. And then another, uh, there's a great little community um, a bit more to the east called Greenwood. It's a very small little city, actually. I think it's the smallest city in Canada, or in British <laughs> Columbia. And uh, there's some nice little restaurants there, a couple little restaurants, nice little bakery or two. But there's also a campsite there called Boundary Creek. Yes. And it's, it's a short distance uh, before you get to Greenwood. 
it looks like a pleasant little place to stop to again just off the main road so it's going to be a little louder uh, they do have a municipal campground in greenwood right in the middle of the city and it's kind of very basic yeah very basic but also the town of midway which is between rock creek and Greenwood also has a nice riverside municipal campground as well. Yeah, that's true. It, that it, it's uh, um, mostly for smaller rigs or tents. Yeah, so uh, you know, there's plenty of choice, and um, if you're having trouble getting a reservation, I think you can still go and, and find a spot to stay if you're just interested in staying overnight. in a van with our air conditioner running. I've got the chicken burrito, a little bit of salsa, some corn chips and the burrito. And then for Mickey, well, they do their own sort of soy protein as well. And no lactose. And so, no cheese. Yeah, so no cheese. And nice. Yeah, it looks very nice. Well, it kind of looks like a burrito. <laughs> we'll see how they taste. Very good. Mickey's as well. Really nice, really tasty. Mickey's came with guacamole. And salsa, mine. And something else, and salsa. So on the way back, we decided to stop in Manning. Just uh, to, I mean, we knew it would be cooler. It's the elevation is a lot higher. You're a little over 4,000 feet, and we were fortunate enough to get a great spot at the Bee Loop at Lightning Lakes. It was full, but it was quiet, and yeah, we had a really. Like, I don't think I've slept that well in, <laughs> in several nights. And we had a lazy day, didn't, didn't get up to any adventures, but it was a very pleasant evening and dinner and a couple little drinks and a nice leisurely breakfast this morning, so it was really nice. So if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Mm -hmm.